Myasthenia gravis is a neuromuscular chronic autoimmune disease. Okay, but what do all those words mean? Whether you've just been diagnosed with myasthenia, know somebody who has, uh, would just like to find out in simple terms what is myasthenia gravis, then this video is for you. Ross, if we haven't met before. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to explain in simple English what is myasthenia gravis. If you want further information specifically on myasthenia gravis or my story, uh, you can look for my channel MG Athlete or on Instagram at MG Athlete. So, first, I'm going to start with the pronunciation. A lot of people struggle to pronounce myasthenia gravis uh, just because they don't know how to say it. So I'm just going to break it down to make it a bit easier for everyone. Uh, the first part of the first word, my, then as, uh, and then thenia. So my as thenia. Uh, the second word, a couple ways to split it up, but I think grav and then is. So gravis. My as thenia gravis. So my as thenia gravis is known as MG for short, and that's probably because people struggle to pronounce it. Um, and MG affects about 1 in 10,000 people. Although those stats vary on where you look for the information, uh, typically between 5 and 10 in 100,000 is a common stat that comes up. Uh, myasthenia typically also affects women under the age of 40 and then men over the age of 60. Although it can happen to anyone at any time in their life. For me as an example, I was diagnosed as a male at 26 years old. So what is myasthenia gravis? Uh, in the intro I said it was three things. It's a neuromuscular autoimmune disease and it's also of a chronic nature. So I'm just going to split up those three parts and explain each of them individually to try and simplify it for everybody. So the first part, neuromuscular, if you break that down, it really just describes myasthenia. So it involves the nerves as well as the muscles. So in terms of the nerve, uh, the neurotransmitter that's involved in myasthenia gravis is acetylcholine. Um, and acetylcholine sends a message uh, to the muscle. In order for that muscle to contract, that message needs to be received by a muscle receptor or nerve receptor site. Um, so in myasthenia gravis, the problem is that that message is not being received by the muscle and the muscle cannot contract. Um, so in myasthenia gravis, you're having um, antibodies that are being created by the immune system um, and those antibodies block those acetylcholine receptor sites and therefore the acetylcholine cannot uh, make it to the muscle receptor and as a result the muscle cannot contract and that's where you see the weakness um, in people mainly starting in their eyes and then progressing throughout their body. The muscles that myasthenia gravis affects uh, is typically what they call skeletal or voluntary muscles. So it's muscles that are generally seem external and that you have to think about using. So it's none of your basically internal organs, things that you don't know that is are happening. Um, it's not those muscles. Um, although certain things that you think are not voluntary, for example, blinking, uh, chewing, breathing, those are still considered voluntary muscles. So those are the muscles that are affected typically by myasthenia gravis. Uh, starting with the facial muscles, it's muscles that you use a lot, even though you're not aware of them. For example, your eyes, um, your mouth. So that's why the sight is affected very early on in myasthenia gravis, as well as talking or chewing. Your jaw is a muscle that you use quite a lot, um, and that tires quite easily in myasthenia gravis. So the second part, uh, autoimmune disease. What is uh, an autoimmune disease and what is the autoimmune component in myasthenia gravis? So basically in an autoimmune disease, the body is creating antibodies um, against a certain organ uh, and that causes some destruction or an overactive nature of the immune system uh, causes a problem in some sort of functioning in the body. So in myasthenia gravis, uh, there's these acetylcholine antibodies um, formed typically against the thymus gland. 
Um, and that stops, as I mentioned before, uh, these acetylcholine um, messages from being accepted by uh, the nerve receptors and that stops the muscles from working. So in my senior gravis, these antibodies are created chronically and that, con that continuation of these antibodies stops the muscles from working. Um, often the symptoms are worse as the day progresses. So as the person is less rested, it seems that more of these antibodies are created and as a result, uh, less muscle contraction happens um, and a worsening of the symptoms throughout the day. As I mentioned in the autoimmune component, I used the word chronic. Chronic just meaning something that goes on forever. And in my senior gravis, the nature of these antibodies being created is chronic. Um, it doesn't just go away, it seems to almost self-perpetuate um, and goes on eternally. So even though I don't think myasthenia has to be chronic uh, for life, um, you still need to change that chronic nature of why these antibodies are being created in order to recover or see improvement uh, in your symptoms. So the immune system creating uh, antibodies is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it's just the chronic nature of these antibodies being created that causes a problem. Um, if there's a pathogen or something in the body that the immune system needs to take care of, then sometimes certain uh, killer T cells are activated to take care of those pathogens. The problem with myasthenia and with other autoimmune diseases is that this chronic nature of these antibodies being created doesn't switch off. It almost self-perpetuates and that causes this chronic state of inflammation or autoimmunity. So what are these symptoms of myasthenia gravis? Uh, my story sort of followed the typical nature of somebody's symptoms, so I'll just talk through those. Uh, initially for me, double vision was the first symptom I experienced. So as your muscles stop working, obviously you don't know that anything is wrong yet. Uh, the first thing you sort of see is your eye movements aren't working together. Although you don't really know that this is going on in the beginning, uh, it's explained afterwards and then makes sense once you're diagnosed. So basically you start seeing two of everything. Um, so each eye is seeing individually fine, but they're not mapping those images together as one image that a normal person would see. So that's double vision. Uh, along with double vision, you start having a droopy eyelid. So for me, it was very obvious that I had a, a droopy eyelid and double vision. After that, I started struggling with talking. I'm not talking is not funny. I had medicine at 5 o'clock, so I called past 8. Uh, chewing, especially warm foods. Swallowing wasn't too bad for me, but now and then I struggled to swallow. And then also progressed into uh, skeletal or limb muscle weakness. So I couldn't do any push-ups. I couldn't sit up. Um, I could still walk, although I never really pushed myself to see how far I could run or walk. Um, I couldn't really move myself off the ground or out of bed or off the floor. So in that regard, my muscle weakness was really bad. Um, also my grip strength deteriorated, so I couldn't hold a knife or a pen. I remember I couldn't sign um, a slip the one time because my fingers couldn't grip the pen. Um, and I remember when eating, I had to change how I gripped the knife in order to cut. Um, also, in terms of brushing my teeth, I had to change how I gripped a toothbrush. But the obvious ones really are the eyes. Uh, it's very noticeable to see a sort of myasthenia droopy eyelid. Um, although you cannot tell if someone has double vision, they should be able to tell themselves that it, they are experiencing double vision. And you get a very slurred speech. So I remember certain letters are more difficult to pronounce. I remember I struggled with the letter B especially. And I think it's the emphasis when you're saying B, uh, the jawline seems to struggle to do that. So it was more like a B, B. I couldn't pronounce my words very well. So I'll do a separate video talking about diagnosis and treatment, uh, but just for a short introduction here, well, how do you diagnose my senior gravis? Uh, the tests that I went through firstly were a blood test to test for the autoantibodies. Um, so the acetylcholine receptor antibodies, um, and that test came back positive for me. Um, and then the other one is an electrical test where they basically send an impulse uh, through your muscles 
and they check how those muscles respond, how long it takes for the impulse to get sent back. Um, and that way they'll be able to tell if you have myasthenia or not. Once you've been diagnosed or suspected of having myasthenia gravis, you often undergo a CT scan uh, to get an image of the thymus gland. Uh, typically they're looking for an enlargement of the gland, which they call hyperplasia, or a growth on the gland, which is called a thymoma. Um, I had a thymoma, uh, which is often operated on to remove, but I did not want my thymus gland removed. Um, and I'm pleased to say after three years, that growth first reduced uh, and then disappeared. So my thymus gland is back to normal and I did not have a thymectomy to remove my thymus gland. Uh, that was a personal choice for myself. Um, I'll get on to explaining that in future videos, why I decided not to have thymectomy, even though it is a standard procedure that most doctors would recommend for myasthenia gravis patients. And then what are the basic treatment options for myasthenia gravis? Initially, when most people are diagnosed, they put on a trial um, of mestinon or pyridostamine. Um, that's what I started with as well. Even before diagnosis, I think my eye specialist uh, prescribed me five days of mestinon to see if that would improve my symptoms. So mestinon really just allows um, more contraction of the muscles. Um, it allows more acetylcholine to be produced or more acetylcholine to make it uh, to the nerve receptor sites um, and that allowing more contraction of the muscles. After mestinon, uh, people progress to corticosteroids or prednisone um, and that's basically used to lower the immune system output of these antibodies. So the immune system is running right um, and creating all of these antibodies that are causing the muscle receptors to be blocked. Um, so the steroids are used to lower those antibodies um, and that often relieves a lot of people's symptoms. Uh, the problem though with these steroids is they have other side effects um, and that was one of the big reasons why I tried to avoid going on to prednisone as far as I could. Another treatment option is to have the thymus gland removed. A lot of people see a reduction in their medication after removing the thymus gland, which is a site for these antibodies to be created. Other treatment options include plasma exchange or IVIG. Uh, these are often needed for people that are in really in crisis um, and they need a short term removal of these antibodies in order to lower their symptoms as quickly as possible. I would like to host one or two other myasthenia patients um, on the channel um, and then we will talk about these other treatment options and their experiences going through those treatments. So if you have had uh, some of these options and would like to get in contact with me and possibly discussing this on my channel, uh, please leave me a comment down below and then I'll get in contact with you about that. So in future videos, I'll talk a bit more about my personal story with myasthenia, um, more in depth about my symptoms and my journey through medication, uh, the lack of doing the thymectomy um, and how I managed to achieve remission um, without being on medication anymore. So thanks for watching the video guys. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. Um, consider subscribing to my channel if you do have myasthenia or an autoimmune disease and would like to follow my story. Uh, otherwise, just leave a comment down below. If you would like to look at more of the videos on my channel, uh, you can go to MG Athlete. Otherwise, click on some of my other videos to watch here. Yeah.